Even European elite bloodlines claim to hail from Poseidon. We've mentioned many times before with references, so we're not going to go back there. But a watcher fallen angel making them a Nephilim by their own admission. And they believe that gives them the right to divine rule. Oh, wait a minute. No, it gives them the right to be consumed, even in spirit, by eternal fire on the day of judgment. And that's it. They don't belong. And that, my friends, is Nephilim doctrine. It's the same with the Chinese emperors who claim to hail from dragon bloodlines. Who are the dragons? Well, Nephilim. The Bible doesn't have fairy tales per se. Try to debate that here. Be muted. Our channel, Our Rules. They are an abomination, but today we don't see giants walking around because of this, but we do find many elites and royals who preserve their bloodlines and wish to dominate over mankind, just as the Nephilim did. It's the same ideology. Many think this is because they are racist, and they are. There's no doubting that. They think that they are uh, you know, higher beings of sort. That's called racism. Uh, they believe they have the divine right to rule, though. Why? Because of their bloodline. Uh, that is Nephilim ideology. It's not Bible. Uh, it always has been Nephilim and Watcher ideology. Many of them, such as the Merovingian line we've covered before, actually claim to descend from Poseidon, a Watcher fallen angel who fathered ten giant kings or titans from Atlantis. They ruled Atlantis. They were five sets of twins, uh, in fact, according to that lore. Uh, that is found in the land of creation, the land above the Garden of Eden, ancient Havila, named for Hava, Eve's curse of labor in childbirth, which proves to be the modern Philippines. Watch those videos. Try to debate over there. Not on this video, as we didn't prove that here, but we cite what we proved over there. Otherwise, be muted. No debate in ignorance without reviewing our position. Our channel, our rules. Again, try to debate over in that series, Answers in Jubilees, if you care to try, uh, but don't do it here. Our channel, our rules. Yes, the church and scholars ignore it willingly in stupidity. They do not test it. They hang on a few shallow points uh, having never truly read it, except to ridicule Jubilees and Enoch especially, uh, which one can do with the Gospels, by the way, and they do. They pit them against uh, each other because they make themselves too stupid to try to reconcile and understand the differences, which are not actually differences, but the poor understanding of things like the Bible calendar versus the Pharisee calendar. They're not sure that there's two calendars. They don't even know that. So they don't even know to ask the simple question before even entering the passage, which calendar am I looking at here? Then they offer a complete failure in interpretation because they don't know. They live in willing ignorance. They choose to be. Claiming there was a discrepancy, right? No. They do it with everything because, well, they're not really scholars of the Bible. They are scholars of the occult in most cases. And the giants slew the Nafil, and the Nafil slew the Eljo, or Elyo, really, uh, or perhaps that's elves, who knows, uh, and the Elyo, uh, mankind, and one man another. I mean, when you watch uh, movies like Lord of the Rings, uh, you're, you're literally watching the pre-flood world before the flood. You know, they even talk about a Middle Earth, right? Which would be up on the continents uh, because even the ocean floor would be principally dry land with mega rivers, giant rivers worldwide running through them. Watch our Rivers from Eden series uh, for more on that. Uh, again, try to debate that here without reviewing our position. Be muted. Our channel, our rules. I mean... That's what they say, uh, if, if scholars could only read, of course. So, their souls or spirits, yes, the Bible treats those two words interchangeably, really, regardless of what some stupid scholar trying to justify New Age says. And for them, and, well, the Marvel comics, Nephilim, the end. 
Only the false church pretending to be his ecclesia fronts with such nonsense uh, teaching against it when the New Testament teaches the same thing. And this is one of many issues that they've screwed up. They don't even know what they are doing, most scholars that is, uh, because they, they just don't see it, even though it's right in front of their nose, because they're steeped into a paradigm. They're boxed in and they can't see outside of the box. However, when we do not know our enemy, well, Hosea 4, 6, my people perish from lack of knowledge. That same church will say some of the dumbest things like, you know, oh, we should only focus on our salvation. Yet salvation is a relationship with Yahushua, which is exactly what we're doing in this. And there is no other name by which men are saved and no other way, that's for certain. No salvation in telling people, well, they just say a prayer and check a box, as most of the church does. But even John MacArthur, who's supposedly the origin of that doctrine, um, it's idiotic. Uh, of course, that guy also attacks the Sabbath, the biblical law, uh, while claiming to be the minister of the gospel. He's the minister of lawlessness. He is a minister of sin, by definition. That gospel is Satan's, and it is lawlessness. It is the same as the Nephilim before the flood, and the earth makes accusation against him and those others who are doing the same. These are not men we should look up to. They should be, and they will be, condemned for leading the lambs to slaughter, and that unfortunately permeates the modern church. And yes, my friends, this is history. We could care less what stupid academic tries to redefine the term history while ignoring the oldest written history in, by human hands ever. That's called willing ignorance by Peter, 2 Peter 3, and they make themselves fools. That's their decision. It doesn't have to be ours. Are you kidding? Uh, the Bible exposes it. Now, no, they're not doing that here. And now for a special announcement. Timothy J. Schwab is hosting a two-day conference on August 1st and 2nd in Baguio City. I know so many of you want to meet the man in person which is why it is pretty odd that Tim has neglected to tell his audience about this conference. Get your tickets now. And remember, if you have any questions for Tim make sure they are softballs because try to debate and you will be muted.